And welcome to our special City Council meeting for Tuesday, November 12th. It's 6 p.m., so I'll call the meeting to order. And would you please take roll? Yes, sir. Council Member Gastineau? Here. Council Member Shalong? Here. Council Member Murray? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Holly? Here. And Mayor Ania? Here. Thank you very much. We've just come out of closed session, and Mr. Black, do you have anything to report out of closed session? Mayor, no final actions were taken in closed session. All right. Thank you. And if we'd all stand, Mr. Gastineau, would you lead us in the pledge? Under acknowledgments this evening, we have none. Under uh, consent calendar, we have none. And reports and presentations, we have none. So we will move to pub the public comment period. And the public comment period, any member of the audience is invited to address the City Council on any matter that's within the jurisdiction of the City of Crescent City. Comments of public interest or on matters appearing on the agenda are accepted. Note, however, that the Council is not able to undertake extended discussion or act on non-agendized items. Such items can be referred to staff for appropriate action, which may include placement on a future agenda. Any comments that are not made at the microphone will be out of order and not part of the public record. After receiving recognition from the mayor, please state your name and whether you're a city or county resident for the record, and public comment is limited to three minutes. Does anyone have any general public comment statements they want to make before we go into the continuing business? Yes. Hi, um, my name is Michelle Clark and I live in Crescent City. I'm a tenant in the Driftwood Apartments and I want to know if my protest was disqualified. I, was, I submitted my protest along with the two first pages of my rental agreement showing the water was included in my rent. So my landlord pays the water but I will be the one affected by a rent increase and I can't afford it as I'm on a fixed income. Thank you. Thank you. Any other general public comment? Yes. Hi, Eileen Cooper. I opened up the paper today and read that the city is being granted somewhere between 533 and almost a million dollars from the state in order to finance projects in the sewer system that would have been programmed to co come from rates um, and paid for by the users. And I w would think that after seeing the hardship of people on the street that I visited and their inability to pay, the cumulative increases between the water and sewer, that you would find a way and not be take cold-hearted directions from a finance director, but find a way to ease the burden on the people and that this cumulative increase is what's hurting people. And that if we're giving, being given almost a million dollars by the state to ease our burden, we expect that to be passed on to us. You're here to help us. When I walk the streets, People are living in shacks right now. People are really hurting. You need to find a way to use that money. If it, whether it comes, whether the reduction comes from sewer or city, it's the cumulative effect that is hurting people. And so that goes a long way. I was really struck by the large number and how it would wipe out our, our city debt on water if the sewer could be decreased by an equal amount. These are the kind of creative thinkings that we ask of you. Thank you. Any other general public comment? Yes. Linda Setter, I'm in the county. Liberty and justice for all. I sit here and watch you. Some of you got smug little smiles on your faces and you don't really give a damn about what's going on here as far as increasing water rates. Um, what I did notice as an observer, on November 5th, the first 200 um, votes, ballots that were calculated, uh, out of those 200 calculated votes, 113 were validated. <clears throat> the rest 
were invalidated because they were not a rate payer, meaning that they were tenants. That was the majority. So in essence, the tenants didn't have a right to protest, which is in violation of government code. I believe it's 57255, I'm not for sure, I forgot. Uh, I, I can almost guess that none of you have been homeless. Has any of you ever experienced that? Keep going with your statement, last, we can't answer. Well, I have. Last year I was homeless for six months, uh, but prior to getting my home. So I know what it's like not to have. And it was a very humbling experience, I will tell you that, living in my car. Okay? The people that I attained signatures from, they're a couple of months behind in their water bills already. That's water and sewer out in the birch track area. They're going to churches. We can only support so many people. You folks don't care. So expect, number one, an initiative to come through because we will get this overturned. Number two, you all need to be recalled because you're not for the people, you're against the people, and I'm tired of this we against you attitude. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Yes. Donna Westphal, I live in the city. The city clerk position is to be a neutral position, much like Switzerland. That means that the public should be assured that any counting by the city clerk is to be done without undue pressure by either side, therefore allowing a completely honest, unbiased counting. I'm going to paraphrase an email from Tim Biddle, the director of legal affairs at Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. It was sent to the city manager, city attorney, Mayor Nia, on September 16th. Prop 218 allows any tenant to pro protest a proposed fee increase if he is directly liable to pay the fee. A tenant could be directly liable to pay water and sewer fees under the terms of his lease, whether or not he is the name subscriber in the city's billing records. Many cities allow only one name to be listed as a subscriber. In such cities, landlords may require a husband and wife to both sign the lease, making them both directly liable to pay utility bills, even though only the wife, for example, is listed as a subscriber in the city's billing records. If that were the case, a protest signed by the renting husband should be counted even though his name is not on the city's billing records. State statute is even more lenient than Prop 218 with regard who may sign a protest. Government Code Section 53755B provides one written protest per parcel filed by an owner or tenant of the parcel shall be counted in calculating a majority protest. Section 53755 contains no requirement that the tenant be directly liable to pay the fee if the only written protest for a parcel is submitted by a tenant, whether or not he is directly liable to pay the fee, the statute says it shall be counted. Donna, feel free to forward this email to your city council, city attorney, and our city manager to warn them that if the raw number of protests received is sufficient to defeat the proposed fee increase and they disqualify tenant protesters, Merely because they are not the name subscriber in the city's billing records, the city may face a lawsuit from us. Timothy A. Biddle, Director of Legal Affairs, Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association. Then this is a question I want to leave with our city clerk. Are you sure you stand by your numbers? Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment at this time? If not, I'll close the public comment period. And we'll move on. Yes, come on up. I'm sorry. My name is John Stetson, and I'm from the county. <clears throat> I'm going to change the subject. Okay. I'd like to discuss something here that Kelly Shalong brought up, some questions. And although we tried to play tag and haven't coordinated yet, I appreciate the outreach. That's why I'm here this evening to try and give you some answers on some questions you had before, such as, why do I or others show up at the first hearing with complaints or issues or opposition to what's being presented? I thought well about that, and I, I, 
my answer, and I think the public layman's understanding, would be that the first hearing is the presentation of what the facts are. That before then is all preparatory work where things may change and is not really geared necessarily towards hearing other points of view, especially if they're finance related. I happen to have a degree in finance so I can deal with some of that stuff. A second reason people don't take part, for the what it's worth, not always applicable, is Monday Night Football. How much of that, how much of that infects who shows up on Monday, I, I couldn't say, but I think it's another factor. I think I would look forward to discussing in the future with you other ways that getting the public involved could be accomplished. Um, I don't think I'm late to the process by coming to the first hearing, but I can understand your side of the coin too. Um, I want to apologize with an error to perhaps all of you. You brought up the point in my last presentation where I kind of made an accusation that there wasn't critical thinking going on by the board. And you, in essence, made me aware that behind the scenes before you got here, there was some of that occurring. So to that end, I want to correct the record. But I'd also like to make the point that such at the first hearing, that the public hears some discussion and debate amongst the council women and men to know that this critical thinking is occurring. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Is there any other uh, public comment at this time? Yes. Jesse, Jesse Salisbury, Crescent City, just to jump on the tailcoat. <clears throat> um, you know, 14 years ago when I started to come to these meetings, I was drugged down, uh, down to the cultural center by Jim Snow and it was uh, Jim Snow, me, and Richard Miles. So, kind of like a three-ring circus. Uh, we had uh, the five council members up there and 10 to 12 uh, members of staff sitting in the audience, and we were pretty easily trumped on anything that we had to say. We've really come a long way in the last 14 years, uh, you know, getting the agendas out. We have more than just uh, on a two-hole punch board at the library, blowing out the door, you know, when somebody would open the door. Uh, we were able to get uh, some bulletins up. We have, uh, we're online now, we're on, on, on uh, TV, you know, streaming video. We really have come a long way <clears throat> in, uh, in becoming a little more transparent. Um, I'd like to thank you for that. Uh, we, we've actually come really a long way. Um, now, trying to touch on this, this water thing just a little bit. Um, I, I, I just, uh, here's the bad taste in my mouth again. So many, so many protests were uh, turned down. Um, it just seems like there's a really systemic problem. Somebody dropped the ball somewhere. I don't know that if it, what side it was on. I mean, I thought that we were doing what we were supposed to do. Uh, you know, we uh, talked to some lawyers and they told us that, that the tenants were able to uh, sign and, and by having this many turned down, um, I would have to, uh, the only thing I could think of is that uh, tenants were, were disqualified. I hope that me as a tenant, uh, that I, I wasn't disqualified, and I would like to find out if I was. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Okay, seeing none, I'll close the public comment period. And we'll move on to public hearing, which we have none. Next is continuing business, and we're going to have a receiver report from our city clerk, Ms. Robin Patch, on our protest 218 pertaining to the proposed water rate increase. Ms. Patch. Good evening, Good evening, Mayor and members of the City Council. I'm not quite too used to pushing the button for me, so <laughs> I wanted to report to you that for a for four full eight-hour days last week, I tabulated the protests for Prop 218, along with Fritz Ludeman and Deborah Wright. Before I, read my, before I read my certification of the outcome, I would like to give my sincere appreciation to a, a few people. I thank both Chief Plack and Sergeant Apperson for escorting me to and from the wastewater treatment facility and the police department after, under the view of the camera, I had secured the protest in a briefcase and then placed it into the police department's evidence room. 
I want to also thank uh, Information Services for its Ludeman for the precise computer system that allowed us to accurately locate parcels and log the valid protests. And to also let you know that we also log duplicate protests that were received on many parcels. I would also like to thank Deborah Wright for her knowledge of our water customers and history with the department. And with that, I would like to read to you the certification of the city clerk. Ms. Ms. Patch, yeah. um, I think it's important too that you um, note for the record that uh, proponents of the protest were also um, on site during the count. Oh, indeed. Thank you. Um, for the first day, I had Mr. John Stetson and Linda Sutter. Mr. John Stetson actually stuck it out for the entire week. Uh, we had Eileen Cooper present for the majority of the week. Donna Westfall was there for a couple of hours. And I believe that that was the extent. For the last day, it was uh, Mr. Stetson. He was by himself. So. And also, the newspaper was invited to be, th to yes. be there if they would if they wanted to. And they came for a, just a portion, like a very short period of time. They walked in just to ask if they could take a picture. And I asked if they could respect the process and not to take any pictures of the, the protests themselves. And they were very respectful on that. OK. And then also, there was a camera on at all times. All times. And when the camera was turned off, it was simply for the fact that the disk only allowed an hour. So Fritz had it do about 50 minutes, 55 minutes. And at the moment that it was turned off, I took my hands off the protest and didn't do any work until it was on camera again. Thank you. Indeed, you're welcome. So if there are no further questions of the council? OK, very good. I, Robin Patch, duly elected city clerk of the city of Crescent City, herewith certify the outcome of the Proposition 218 protest regarding the water rate increases described in the Proposition 218 notice sent on September 16th, 2013, as follows. I have determined that the total number of parcels affected by the proposed increases in water fees is 3,741, and that the number of protests on behalf of the affected parcels required for the protest to be successful is 1,871. I have determined that each person or entity who is owner of one of the affected parcels is eligible to file a protest for that parcel. I have further determined that each person or entity who receives a bill in his or her, her or its name for water services at the affected parcel is eligible to file a protest for that parcel. I have determined that any tenant directly responsible to pay his or her water bill is eligible to file a protest for that parcel. I have received and kept safe all protests and withdrawals of protests, if any, presented in hand to me through the closing of Proposition 218 hearing on November 4th, 2013. I have counted the parcels for which valid protests were filed and determined that there were valid protest, protests presented to, with respect to 1,302 parcels. This number is insufficient for a successful protest. Therefore, I certify that the protest is unsuccessful. And I certify that this eighth day of November 2013 by me. And can I just ask, was it made clear in the beginning, in my mind it was, but um, was it made clear that uh, it was the person who was responsible for the bill that had the ability to protest? It was, and I was very pleased with the mailings that the city had provided to the residents. It was very clear also in the resolution that stated that uh, it was a tenant that was directly responsible for the bill or an owner of the parcel directly responsible for okay. the bill. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank okay. you. Any thank questions you. of the council? Okay, thank you. Ms. Thank Patrick. you. Okay, before we move on to consider and take action on the other two items, is there anyone that hasn't spoken about water yet that wants to talk about any of the three items right now? Okay, you've spoken already about the water. You've spoken under public comment about the water already. Anyone that hasn't spoken about the water? Right? No, that wants to speak about these three items. Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to... Item number two. Yes. Yes. Are you saying that we cannot speak on the water if we've said anything about the water? 
Right, you have the public comment period. Yeah, but a public comment period is totally different than this. It's separate. It's this is this is a continuation of last week's meeting where we right. closed that public hearing. Yeah, but to speak in a, to speak at public comment period now silences me from speaking on the water. You spoke about the water. You spoke that you yeah, wanted. Not, af not after Mrs. Patch came up here and talked about what she did. Now it's a, it's a whole other can of worms. You spoke about the water already. You spoke about that you <clears throat> wanted to check and see if your boat was contacted. You spoke about the water. That is that it's closed now. But she. Oh, con contention is that that she was not counting the vote right. That was your. That's what she said already. Yeah. You said that already. So, so, it, so is it your contention, and it's on record that that it's that it's correct that you not count tenants. She. What, it's on record of what she spoke. Yes. It is on record. And, and, and it's on record that you think the vote should be tenants. And that's and, on record. And our legal counsel agrees with that? It's on record. It's on record. So we're going to move on to item number two now. Consider and okay. take action to approve the Wildan water study rate. Right. Water rate study. Excuse me. It's on record. If the city can. He's part of our city. Thank you. Let's. Mayor. Mayor. Ms. Yes. Would you like Mr. Black to clarify that? Sure. At all? Black. The question of counting tenants was uh, adopted by you as part of the resolution tracking the exact language of the California Constitution, Proposition 218, the tenants directly responsible to pay the bill. There were some tenants that submitted evidence of their responsibility, even though they were neither property owners nor uh, listed in the city water uh, department records, number one. Number two, the problem with the protest was primarily that more than one protester submitted, hun hundreds of people submitted duplicate protests on parcels. It wasn't a question of counting tenants or not counting tenants. That wasn't the reason that it failed. No. Hey. So the attorney is speaking, please. So here's the thing. They can say what they want, but it's all there. It's on paper. <laughs> right. So they can shout from the audience. They can get all upset. They can make hun dozens of false claims the way they have been making false claims for seven years on the sewer protest. And they will go on, and they'll probably do so for years ahead. But it's all there. It's on paper. Thank you, Mr. Black. Yeah. Mr. Stetson, you can speak. You haven't spoken about the water. Go ahead. I can you, speak at this yes, point. Yes, you can okay. speak to any one of these three Thank items. You. The Will Dan report, the city clerk's report. If I may give this to the city clerk. Sure, you can. What I've presented to uh, Robin is the following coastal voices that have been published in the paper regarding this. Mm -hmm. I ask that they be included in the record. Protests aside, what about our water by the staff of the triplicate on September 30? Coastal Voices, even in Del Norte, don't take water for granted, written by Councilman Rick Holly, October the 4th. Let's Get Real, Water System is in Jeopardy, written by Ron Gastineau, October 7. And Coastal Voices, the ratepayers don't have endless pockets, which I penned. They, There's just one copy of each. So. I'm sorry, that's all I was told was necessary. So, we, yes, I know that we'll is make correct. Copies. We'll make copies. That you are correct. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to digress for a second sure. here. Those were simply for entry to the record for those purposes. I don't want to have a fight with Mr. Black. I don't want to argue with Mr. Black. But I would like to make sure you do hear that this protest group is now more organized and they have the number one and two consultants in the state as people giving them legal recommendations. It includes the author of the bill, AB 218. Donna has just read to you 
that the section that exists in code does not mandate direct responsibility for having to be responsible for paying the fees involved as a rate payer. The process went through, and yes, there's plenty of paper on, if that's what you're referring to, the protests, but there is a question of whether some were, cons were in fact valid when calculated as not rate payer. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Scooper, you may speak. You spoke about the sewer and not the water. You can. Thank you. Sure. Um, so, yes, I did previously speak about the sewer mm -hmm. um, fund being relieved and perhaps that be an avenue. Now, I'd just like to comment on my experience with this counting. And I've, I know that in a truly democratic process, where everybody would be actually mailed a ballot that would be sent to be counted, that that amount would be overwhelming. Probably 90% if what the people on the street found to be the attitude. Um, unfortunately, when people aren't mailed a ballot, their lives are so torn um, with keeping up with the economics of everyday living that really most people still, even the, just the days before this was due, were, were, were glad to see somebody, oh, that's a smart idea coming around. They, they, they didn't even realize that they could vote. I mean, it, 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 it is my, perhaps a sad comment that people are not on the ball with these things, but then um, we should really go out of our ways to have a real democratic process on these things. That if I came across in the small amount that I helped, the very small amount that I helped in my immediate na neighborhood, came across 90% and likewise with other walkers of people knowing that they just wouldn't be able to pay all of this together, then surely with a true democratic process, close to 90% of people would want something different. I, I, I ask you to be real community members and consider that in all of this whole picture and in what you're doing with the sewer now and what you can do in the future for water. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next we'll move to our next item, number two under continuing business. That's consider and take action to approve the well down water rate study. Mr. Palazzo. Mayor, members of council, at this time, uh, we would ask the council to take action and approve the well down water rate study. Thank you. Any council comments or motion? I'll move to approve. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Is, would you please take the poll vote? Yes, sir. Council Member Murray? Yes. Council Member Shalong? Yes. Council Member Gastineau? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Holly? Yes. And Mayor Ania? Yes. The final item, item number three, is consider waive and waive full ruling, reading, read by title only, and adopt an ordinance entitled Ordinance Number 777 an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Crescent City revising the Crescent City Municipal Code, Title 13, Public Services, Chapter 13.16, pertaining to water services charges. Is there any comments or a motion? Uh, I just uh, have a few comments. It, uh, number one is that we um, cannot change the way Prop 218 is written as a council, and it has to be protest letters. It can't be a mail-in vote. And um, I hope that the people that are out there listening or you in the audience took the time to read the study, um, took the time to read the staff report that was submitted along with it on September 16th, because it doesn't seem like some of you are very well informed and it's, a, it's, it's unfair 
to the people that were being asked to sign protest letters when the people that were advocating to have the protests done didn't know what they were doing. We had, um, I heard people at Safeway asking people if they wanted to sign a protest letter by simply saying, do you want your water rates lowered? That's not even what it was about. So it, it's really unfortunate that um, this uh, effort um, didn't have um, an educational component to it. Yeah, um, and I would hope that you would read this information before you um, spout off on how much we uh, do not care because this is one of the hardest things we, we have to do is make tough decisions like this and we're doing it for the fiscal health of our water system. We're not doing this to harm anybody. We don't like it any more than you do, but it's something that as responsible representatives uh, we need to do. And, you know, I'm sorry you don't like it. Uh, I can understand in some, some ways why you don't like it, but on the other hand, um, this is not an easy thing for anybody to deal with. And so you might want to just remember that. And yeah, that's my... Uh, Any other comments or motion? I'll entertain a motion. Yeah. Well, I, I'd like to, to say a couple of things. One is that uh, I have been a real community member in this community for over 33 years. I want to acknowledge uh, the efforts of the opposition to the water uh, rate increase. Uh, I, I understand that, that many we have a lot of uh, people uh, that don't do well financially and that this is going to be a hardship. But to, to say that we don't care about the people of this community is, is outrageous as far as I'm concerned. We, we care about is trying to keep the integrity and, and of our water system and make sure that it's maintained into the future so that our children inherit a utility that's workable and, and lends itself to good public safety. So uh, with that in mind, uh, uh, I, I don't know how we can go any other way than to, to vote vote for this resolution, and I and I I too am, am very sorry that this is necessary that it, that the system is is um, is in such jeopardy that we need that we need to take the action at this time. I wish there were an alternative, but I don't know of one. So thank you. Motion. Uh, I would just say that I agree completely with what Mr. Hawley just said, so I won't, I won't repeat it. Is there a motion on this uh, ordinance? I'll make a motion to adopt um, the ordinance number 777, ordinance of the City Council of the City of Crescent City, revising the Crescent City Municipal Code Title 13, Public Services, Chapter 13.16, pertaining to water services charges. Is there a second? Second. Would you pull the vote, please? Yes, sir. Council Member Gastineau? Yes. Council Member Shalong? Yes. Council Member Murray? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Holly? Yes. And Mayor Enya? Yes. Our next item is City Council items. Do we have any legislative matters, Mr. Palazzo? Or Mr. Palazzo? Do we have any uh, legislative matters before us? City manager reports no, since last week. Reports concerns our council. Any council reports from last month? Um, I, I have a few. Go ahead. Uh, I attended the League of California Cities Leadership Conference uh, last week, and it was uh, sponsored and paid for by the League of California Cities. There are uh, many issues that I learned about, um, including some changes um, in uh, the way we need to identify certain areas of our budget, but they won't go into effect until 2015. I'll be sending out an email on that. And then um, I attended Jared Huffman's Seaside Social in Eureka on Saturday night and um, the Veterans Parade yes, uh, yesterday morning. It was a gorgeous morning and we had a real nice parade. It was, it was a nice parade. Any other council comments? Did you? Uh, I would just like to say that um, I too went to the Veterans Parade yesterday. It was. Um, I love small hometown parades. Um, and the Warriors won Friday night and put them into the playoffs. So uh, they will be playing in Napa on Saturday night. 
So say a prayer <laughs> for them. Um, and, um, you know, just continue to reiterate that um, Mr. Stetson, I will, I will try, continue to try to hook up with you. And, uh, you know, I am always available. Um, I have a very busy schedule, but you can email me. I'm very good at returning emails. Um, or you can leave a message with our city clerk, and I'll try to return your call if, uh, if anyone would like to um, discuss our water rates. Thank you. Do you have any comments? With that, then, we'll adjourn our meeting until Monday night, November 18th at 6 p.m. And thank you. For